Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and today is the last day. It's day seven of our Tempest Remastered week here at Heroes and Legends, and our first six days have been a set review of Tempest Remastered. So if you haven't seen that, we have a six-part series, and each part was one of the colors in the set. We looked at every single card. The final part then was all the rest of the cards. We got to all the multicolor and the color list. So if you're interested in playing Tempest Remastered on Magic the Gathering Online, might be worth checking out those videos, talk about some of the limited strategies, and get familiar with what cards you can expect in the set. So having said that, last February, when they first announced Tempest Remastered at the end of the month, we did a video where we speculated what 15 cards do we think will be the mythic rares in Tempest Remastered. So I thought it'd be fun to go back and see how we did and give ourselves a report card on our speculation. And this will just be kind of a quick fun video just to kind of see where we on were we off how off were we so first what we'll do is we're going to look at every card that we thought was the mythic rare and give ourselves a big green check mark or a red x whether it got in there or not and then for the ones that we missed we'll see what actually made it in so let's get started first one was dream halls and we got that one right this is just a very powerful card it's seen play in a lot of constructed formats and from a limited point of view yeah, it can do some kind of fun things in Limited. So we guessed right on that one. That did make it in. Next one, we were wrong, and it was Duplicity. Duplicity actually did not get a reprint at all, so it's not even in there at a different rare level. It was just plain wasn't included, and I kind of think the reason it probably wasn't included, it's not quite as powerful as a lot of the other cards that they did include at the mythic level and it can be a kind of confusing card obviously it's got a whole wall of text there if you take a look at it one of the things i think we maybe miscalculated too was they did want to keep the set very balanced for limited so there are white cards and red cards for example that got the call up to the mythic level that maybe weren't quite as good but we, I don't think, picked any white or red cards at all because they just weren't the most powerful cards. So Duplicity didn't make it. Next one is Mind Over Matter, and that didn't make it either. So that was another one. Just We thought it sees a lot of cube play, just sees some different play and constructed here and there as well. And it's just kind of a fun, decent card. Kind of plays into that discard strategy, which is a big part of the Tempest block. But didn't make it... In fact, much like the last card, it actually didn't get reprinted at all. Next, we have Time Warp, and that one did make it, so we were right. Uh, so we're batting 500, 50% uh, so far. And the reason I kind of thought Time Warp would be a mythic, it was a mythic when it was reprinted in the course set a couple of years ago. But basically, Wizards has decided any of these take extra turn cards feel mythic, so they did go ahead and usually put them at the mythic level. Living Death is the next one, and again, we got that right. Just a really, really powerful card. There's some broken stuff in Constructed, and can do some pretty crazy things in Limited even, just to make a swingy board state. So it made it. And then Recurring Nightmare also made it, and that was another one that we chose. This is just a huge cube card. It just, again, does some crazy broken things. Just so hard to deal with. And it's limited playable. Probably not as good in limited where your creature choice is a little more, more narrow, but still a very good card. Oath of Druids. And this thing has been a house and constructed decks in eternal formats for a long time. It's a card that's kind of fun and swingy for limited, so I thought this is a good chance they'll reprint it, and it's just kind of a silly sort of limited card in most cases. Survival of Fittus almost really falls in line with Oath of Druids. It's maybe a little more pointed, and you can kind of rely on it a little more as opposed to just the luck of Oath of Druids, at least in limited. But Still an awesome card. It's done some broken things and constructed, and it can do some kind of fun things and limited as well. Next one is Crystalline Sliver. So we picked this as a mythic, and it was actually an uncommon. So that surprised me a little bit at least. I thought at least it would maybe be a rare. And this card, the reason we picked it as mythic is just because it's so powerful. And I guess the thought was we had a little bit of concern about this being too prevalent in the limited environment that might make slivers just too good uh, but i'm sure they play tested it i'm sure they 
figured that it was okay at the uncommon level, so here it is as an uncommon. Next is Sliver Queen, and yeah, we got that one right, so that one's probably a pretty easy one. I think the fan base would have been pretty upset if you come out with a set called Tempest Remastered and you don't reprint Sliver Queen. So there she is. She's back. She's a Mythic Rare. Curse Scroll was the next one. We got that one correct as well. And again, just a powerhouse card. It's just been such a staple in cubes, and it was huge in standard back in the day, and still see some play in the internal formats here and there. So it's also a fun card that just does a fine job in limited as well. Next is Lotus Petal, and Lotus Petal did get reprinted, but it also got reprinted at the uncommon spot. And the reason we were thinking Mythic, I think, was just because it's just so powerful. It's just such a good card. Uh, but what is kind of smart about this, and I really like, they put it at the uncommon level. So if I do get a Sliver Queen, I have a chance of maybe casting it. Or if I draft a Sliver Queen, I can start trying to draft Lotus Petals, although these are going to go fast in a draft. Uh, so uh, it's kind of cool that there's a bunch of these floating around. I'm actually happy about that, uh, but originally we thought that it could potentially be Mythic. And Mox Diamond. This was an easy one. This was almost kind of a giveaway. We were correct, but it is on the booster pack, so we kind of cheated there. Uh, but yeah, of course, it's called Mox Diamond. It's got Mox in the name. Of course, it's going to be a Mythic Rare. So we did get that one correct. And here's the next one that we did not get correct, and that was Ancient Tomb. Ancient Tomb did not get reprinted. That surprised me a little bit. I almost would have bet out of everything else that this would be one of those mythic rares they'd use this to reprint it get some more copies out there for the community and it's a card that's just fine and limited it's actually very powerful and, and it would be very powerful and limited but if you had it the mythic slot it wouldn't come up all that often so little surprise that that just didn't get the call at all to be reprinted and finally our last one that we got wrong was wasteland and this got reprinted at the rare level instead of the mythic rare level. So I think that's good, though. It's bringing the value of Wasteland down already on Magic Online, and the set's not even out yet. I th th this was a very good thing, just for the economics of the game. It's going to allow more players on Magic Online to be able to purchase Wastelands and just bring the value down. If it was at the mythic level, it would probably still come down a little bit, but the rare, there's just going to be more copies out there. So I think that's a good thing, even though we kind of missed the call on that one. So what did we miss that is a Mythic Rare? Cataclysm is the first one that was reprinted at the Mythic Rare level, and we kind of missed that. It, it does feel Mythic. It is a powerful card. It's almost like a fixed balance, so that does make sense. The next one is Humility, and this is a big sweeping effect. It does affect the whole board. I don't know. It just didn't jump out to me as, wow, that's a Mythic Rare, but... I kind of get their logic behind it. And like I said, I think they wanted to pick two white cards, and these were the two best that they had to choose from. Next is Shard Phoenix, another one that we missed. And again, it doesn't necessarily on its own like scream mythic to me. I mean, I've seen some Phoenixes that are better than this that are at the rare level. But again, they wanted to get two red cards, and the red cards just, this is what they had to choose from. Stark of Wrath, and... Yeah, I get it. He's a legendary creature. He has a pretty powerful effect, even if it's not a super good effect or a super good card. Uh, but yeah, I can see where the argument where he's a, he's legendary or how he can be mythic if you're trying to find some red mythics. Grindstone. This one, I guess it surprised me just because it is a great card and it's great in Legacy. It's a great combo card, part of the Painter's Grindstone decks. So I'm sure they just want to get more copies of this out there and try to bring the price of Grindstone down a little bit. It doesn't do a whole lot for you in Limited. I guess that's why it kind of missed the mark for us. It wasn't on our radar. And Volrath Stronghold is the last one. And this is kind of... I don't know surprising is the right word. I guess I kind of picture this more at the rare slot. It's a good card. It's actually a very, very good card, and it's legendary, so I kind of get it. Um, but very surprising that this got the Mythic Rare call as opposed to Wasteland, but 
pleasantly surprised. I think that's a good thing. So overall, how did we do? Well, here are our final results. We had nine correct. That's pretty good for baseless speculation. <laughs> and six incorrect for a final score of 60%, which is still failing. But I feel pretty good about that. If it was baseball, we'd be doing fantastic. We'd be batting 600. So um, overall, it's kind of just fun to see the results. And whenever I get a chance to do something like this off a of speculation video, I will. I just think it's just kind of a fun little thing to do. So, hey, thanks for joining us through Tempest Remastered Week. This has been a really fun week. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts of Tempest Remastered, Magic the Gathering Online in general, what they are. I'd like to hear more if you guys feel that this type of focus on Magic the Gathering Online is good, if it's too much, if you'd rather just stick to paper magic. Um, just let me know your thoughts. Just be curious. So, hey, thanks a lot for everything. As always, have a great day.